This week we're going to take a look at two useful timing methods that are built into JavaScript. The first, set timeout, waits a given amount of time from execution and then does stuff. The second, set interval, does stuff on a regular and recurring timed interval. For example, once every second. We've actually used both of these in past JSQH tutorials, but we've never actually covered how they work. Let's start with the easier one, set timeout. This only executes a single time, so we don't have to worry about things repeating. The function works by taking a callback function, that is, a function to execute once the timer reaches zero, and a timer value. Here's an example using an inline anonymous function. Save that. Refresh. And after one second, we get our console log. Here's an example using a named function. Save. Run. One second. Two seconds. So that's all pretty straightforward, although it's extremely important to understand that said timeout is natively asynchronous. This means that the code below it will happily execute long before the code inside the set timeout runs. It is, therefore, not really a good way of pausing your application's operation for a certain amount of time before proceeding. It's also a certified bad idea to use it for things like, well, it takes about two seconds to get this data from the DB, so just wait two seconds before running code that relies on that data. Because that is super fragile code that will break the first time your DB takes a couple of milliseconds too long to respond. My most common usage of set timeout these days is for countdown timers in similar UI displays. When you have a finite amount of time you want to count down, it's the way to go. Oh, and you can assign a variable to set timeout, which allows us to cancel it. For example, you might want to cancel an impending countdown if a user takes a certain action. Here's code that insta cancels a set timeout, so it'll never run. Save that. Refresh. One second, two seconds, but no three seconds. Now let's talk about set interval. This allows us to run code over and over again in perpetuity until canceled, at whatever speed floats our boat. Because set interval runs forever, you're basically always going to want to assign it to a variable so that you can cancel it. Here's an example that just logs tick to the console every half second for two seconds, so four times. I'm going to nuke our other timers. Save it. Let's check it out. It helps if you spell set interval correctly. Try again. And there we go. That's nice enough, but it's kind of boring, so let's get crazy. In your HTML, add this code. And in your JavaScript, go with this. All right, there's our code. Let's check it out. Hey, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Now Gandalf up there looks like he's very slowly dodging orc arrows, or maybe dancing with Galadriel. This is a pretty half-assed animation, I'll admit, but if you combine set interval with the HTML canvas element, you can do some pretty nifty stuff. Maybe someday I'll do a tutorial on that. In the meantime, we're good to go here. I'll be back next week with more JS Quick Hits. See you then.